I swear this video won't be as long as Destiny 1 raid videos. Please don't let this be as long as Destiny 1 raid videos. YouTube analytics tells me that not a lot of people are subscribing to the channel, but still watching the videos. So if you guys do like the content, please hit the subscribe button with the bell turned on. Remember it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Destiny 2 year one. What a weird and mysterious place. So much change that we don't even think about now bogged the game down a lot and made the experience for veterans to the series, well, tough to say the very least. Player speed was low. Ability cooldown was slow, double primary weapons, and no random rolls took away the most vital parts of the experience of Destiny 2. I know I'm Batista bombing a dead horse at this point, but the point remains. These decisions felt very against the grain for Destiny, and we would later find out that it was due to a rush game development cycle by Activision squeezing Bungie and profits. Activision squeezing a developer for profit? <laughs> No way, dude! Getting a friend that hated the first Destiny to come play Destiny 2 on launch made you feel like the boy who took down the wolf, then a new wolf came in, and the boy cried again. Every single mistake the first game made was elevated here or worse than the vanilla launch, and players thought the game was doomed to fail and the legacy of Destiny forgotten for good. But we all knew that the one saving grace in the game was the raid. The six player activity home to some of the best mechanics, environments, and honestly just the most expanded upon encounters with the best loot. So how would the Leviathan play out? Would Big Gull be the raid boss? Would those pyramid ships in the epilogue be the raid boss? Only a surprise that you would have to prove yourself worthy to discover was waiting. So by all means. Welcome to the Leviathan. <laughs> Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Leviathan Raid was set to release a week after Destiny 2's launch of September 6th, all the way on the 13th of 2017. Leviathan had some interesting ways that teams prepared for it. This included overleveling, like what Team Redeem told me about with the launch of the game, and prepping for the raid. There was a finite amount of drops from the game for a power level increase. Once you hit your max for the week, that was it. No Prime Engrams that give you levels, no abusing comp playlists for more levels either. Just the Nightfall, some Strikes, some Crucible, and Exotic Quests. Exotic Quests especially were good for leveling, since they were giving good amounts of power increases. So what was one to do when all three characters were done for the leveling for the week, including Exotic Quests? Well, vault everything and make new characters! Run through the whole campaign again, and just in general, a lot of grinding to keep getting gear, usually going up in only tiny increments of levels at a time. This was taking about 6 to 8 hours on average to get drops on a new character. So take all of that information, and it's crazy to say that the top level raiders were making 2 new characters a day for powerful drops by the end of that 6 day period. 16 hours a day of grinding. Some players like Redeem's Error even made 9 characters total before the raid even came out. It got so crazy that Bungie had to hotfix in a patch that capped powerful drops per account to prevent players from leveling over the raid's level cap and making characters. They were beyond ready for what this raid had to offer on day 1. If you've been watching my other raid videos, you can probably guess which teams were competing here on day one, but this raid had some extra spice on it. While Vault of Glass may have been the first raid race ever for Destiny, it was less of a race and more of a mystery. Leviathan definitely was a race though, and the whole world was watching. 
The hype of Destiny 2's record-breaking launch was the 13th of September, and all eyes were on deck for what Emperor Callus had to offer. Welcome to the Leviathan. <laughs> A planet-sized ship. A ship bigger than Oryx's Dreadnought. A ship full of atmosphere, environmental storytelling, and, well, gold. When entering, you will see Nessus behind you, and when walking through, none of the enemies will shoot you as long as you don't shoot them. One cool fact about Leviathan is, well, why it's named Leviathan. It's a planet-eating ship, but the star that it ate and is at the center powering the Leviathan is named Leviathan. So... Yeah, that's pretty cool. There are three entrances that I'm aware of to enter the Leviathan. One in the middle, on the pipes, the normal way through the Colossus that every teammate shoots, and one on the left side where the waterfall is located. Oh, and if you speedrun, the corners and oob to the underbelly. Focusing on day one though, nobody knew what went where, how this raid operated, and how it was all connected. I'm going to go out on a hunch here and say that Leviathan is the biggest raid in Destiny 2 in terms of sheer area, but most players experiencing it for the first time won't even see half of it, but more on this later into the video. The day one experience of this raid came down to learning the new variety of encounters that Destiny 2 would come to offer and how new mechanics would be introduced. You gotta understand that having your abilities capped hard, your weapons being two primaries, and your player speed being tremendously slowed down created a hard day one experience no matter which level the players were. The first encounter was fairly straightforward though, and would serve as a hub encounter to the rest. This was the Castellum. Okay, we're in the new area. Where did you go, guys? You Where got your allies. Uh, okay, there's portal. Um, there's little plates, and they're all glowing. They're all glowing, so I'm gonna go step on them. I think if we might have to grab the fire. Get the ads, ads down first. Ads, get the ads down first. Okay. The Castellum, an area that acted as <sighs> Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls. Look, I know it sounds like every IGN review right now, but trust me, this actually applies to this raid. This area took you to three different paths and the route changed each week where you would be starting and going. The day one experience started with the bath side where the task was simple. Take out the centurions in each door entrance, cup side, access side, and dog side, and plant the staff into the plate that was the first of that week. Only thing that was going to stand in your way was legionaries trying to steal the staff and scions and bubbles casting shields on those enemies. Once you were past that, it was easy pickings. In this area, if a player dies, it's not a respawn restricted, so they could just res after 5 seconds. But one thing that was significantly different about this and all raids in Destiny 2 compared to 1 was that if you died in a respawn restricted zone, you could be resed instantly. But at the cost of the player that res you to lose a res token and not be able to revive you at any point after unless a full team wipe were to happen. In Destiny 1, normal mode had a 30 second timer, but you could just revive someone more than once. In hard mode, you couldn't revive anyone, but in Destiny 2, it was a token system much like the vendors in the game. One thing to also note here is that there was an overall wipe timer. So if somebody stayed dead for too long, the game would just wipe the whole team. After all three staffs were planted, it was on to the boss. Next play is stanky. Just got a scrub behind it. Left this not your Here we go. Here we go. Take a pass. Oh, you. You're a flow. Okay. <laughs> is everyone <laughs> is everyone in their spot? Get out of here! Yeah. Yep, zero door. Yep, same to Levi. Ali and Skeletaro. Okay. He looks fun. Oh, double sword boy. Uh, uh, right. 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 Go right. Doors open. This is a very, very gold. Is that callous? He's ugly as fuck. That thing awesome. it is callous, yeah. yeah. Okay, respond. 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 Stop the baiting ritual. The bats were, and are, still the easiest encounter in this raid. 
stand on plates with the psionic protection so you don't take damage, and use enough weight to raise the lamps and rotate people in to take spots. The only issue I find with this one, and for those on day one, was really communication. Was your teammate going to be late to the plate? Were they going to go to the wrong one? And can everyone kill a bather coming out of the bats? <laughs> one weird thing I found here is that the bats are actually a birthplace of bathers. So yeah, when you kill these dudes, you're actually killing babies. What kind of monster writes this stuff into the game? Anyways, once done with the mechanics of this fight, it was simple. Stand in the middle and kill the lamps. Merciless was everyone's best friend here, and unfortunately this encounter was even easy as hell on day one, since most teams never even had to two-phase the lamps. Your reward was some loot and a weird key. You ready to kill something? Right, let's go. Let's go. Dream let's go. key. Dream key. That's what is this? That's it. That's it. Grab loot and move. The doors are up front. The doors are up front. Go, 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 go. You can't revive. I, I just died yeah, like a okay. moron. I already did, so. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, there you go. Right, okay. Come on, come on. There, there it is. is. Oh, yeah. I got Drinky. Drinky. Nice. Woo! And it's just. Good job, my friends. After this, you were to return to the Castellum. But some players may have noticed switches and pressure plates around this room. More on those later, though. After returning to the Castellum, the rotation that week was to meet the gardens where the beasts were to live. <laughs>
a random key again like bats, and some loot for your efforts. Now, back to the Castellum again. Why is his res back in the room? His res is back in the room. What the f***? Kill him, kill him, kill him. Let's get our one, dude. Let's get our one. We got it, we got it. Easy, go. Oh my god, that's f***ing go. Go back, go back, go back. Go back, go back. Killed mid. There's one right here. Where they at? Where they at? I don't see anymore. I don't see anymore. I got one. There we go. Wait, there it is. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Good. Easy nice. 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 Oh, we got him. Is he the last one? I don't know. He's very low. He's dead. He's dead. We got yeah. him. Yeah. 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 Let's get them. Oh. Chest, is, chest is on top of the safe room. The next challenge after another Castellum completion was the Gauntlet. Basically Mario Kart, but with your feet. <laughs> Movement speed, so slow. Make a snack for one real quick. Yeah, I got you too. Wait. Guys, I'm going to make a sandwich <laughs> back in 20. Uh, I do not have that email. I lied. Happy Thanksgiving. It's a hornacopia. There you go. That's what that is. Come on, man. We had it. We had it. Start the. Get on your plate. Start them out. The gauntlet was really the first puzzle encounter in Destiny raids, unless you count the secret outbreak prime quest or maybe Gorgons, but I don't. The gauntlet required players to let each other through with charges in order to pass the test for Callus. This encounter asked players to take up different roles or stay stationary. Once ad clearing was done on each side and centurions were killed, two players grabbed a charge. One on dog side and one on cup side are teleported into a race against their own wipe timer. The other four players must split into twos on either cup or dog side if you do it in this method. In this method or the rotation method, one player on each side stands on a plate and the other one on the outside gets ready to punch. There are three triangles that these four will be looking at while the two on the inside see nine circles, with one of them being a red circle, while the rest are green. The person on the inside must call out the symbol they see up top and the area where the red circle is. So for example, if I see a red circle on the middle left, I will just call out middle, because on the outside for those four people, they only see three triangles. I don't know why Bungie didn't throw a dial pad in, but whatever. So the players on the inside will call out their top, middle, or bottom, and the twist on this is what the four players on the outside do next, where they need to shoot the opposite of what is called. It's genius. You've never seen anything like this. It's an LFG nightmare. Genius. So now, for the players running, just do that four times and grab a charge at the finish line and dunk it in the middle. The four on the outside will need to coordinate a lot more. So for example, if top gets called out, plate needs to shoot middle, puncher shoots the bottom, and so on. The puncher will need to punch a scion in a bubble after the runner makes it through each side, and the plate person needs to rotate to the next plate so they know what to shoot for the runner next. If you fail to punch the scion, a projection will spawn and ruin your day. After each side, just rotate and do that again. But round two will have missing parts of the floor for the runner, and round three will have more of that but also the plates start hitting you with an extreme gamer move and punch you over and over again from underneath. The other method outside of the rotating method like we just talked about is the less fun option in my opinion, but everyone stays stationary on a plate and shoots to the right or left which triangle they are assigned. This encounter is still one of those that every group is bound to struggle with, so this one was definitely the longest for those racing on day one. After three rounds of LFG Hell, or on day one, some issues, just have all six players complete the race. The best way to execute this is to have each trio grab opposite ones of the other trio. So if there's a charge in the first position, maybe Dogside wants to grab the first set of buffs and then the third set of buffs, while the other side grabs the second set and the fourth set. Now that you're done though, enjoy your fireworks show and your skate park. Wait, just literally just like uppercut? Yep. While you're going down, like... Oh. Like while you're sliding down, just uppercut. What the f***? Oh, okay, sh yeah. That's actually elite. Oh my gosh. What? Hold on. 
That's how that works? Now that all the tests had been completed, it felt like Leviathan was just one big game show, and you were the contestant. Callus greeting you, laughing at you, shooting fireworks off at your accomplishments, and every encounter was different from the last, like a mini game of sorts, leading up to the final challenge. Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it. Jeez, it. Dude, that part sucks as a warlock, dude. I'm at the finish almost. Why did why did I die? I fell. I didn't fall. Just at get all. it in there. I'm sorry. Get it in there. Get it in there. I don't understand why I died. I had time. Well, I made it. Made it as well. Right, we did it. Cool. That's three. Well, is that three? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh, I Oh my I god. Know. Mom and dad get out of here. Boys. Let's go. Oh, shit, everybody. Top right. Gun bottom. Uh, I'll take left middle. Well, you, everyone gets one now. I'm at the goal. Died. I'm at the goal. I'm going uh, mid right. You need four. I got teleported. You need yeah, four. you go back to the middle and you gotta dunk it. But we have people die. Yeah. Can oh, everyone make it through? We only need four. We no, we're gonna we're gonna wipe to the to the people yeah. dying mechanic. Maybe. Oh. No! Oh, wow. oh no! Oh, no, we did it! Oh, we got it! We did it! <laughs> what? Did we get it? Oh my God! How did we get it? What? what? How did we get that? How did we get that? What? We're dead! What? Oh, you can respawn. How did we get that? Dude, we did it! One more trip through the Castellum would prove that this was going to be as epic as the lean room of purple drank led up to the doors to finally face Emperor Callus. That was it was a it right, was an easy go. mistake to make. It looked like the purple would hurt. I agree. I walked on it and said it didn't. That's all well, I'll say. I believe oh, sh there's Callus. Oh, oh, yes. What a big boy! Job of the cabal. This guy's incredible. <laughs> I love this guy. All right. Well, let's see what he says. Uh, let's shoot him. You did to your light. Let me he doesn't give a f Oh, he shot the cup out oh. of his hand. Oh, now he's mad about it. Now okay. he's pissed about it, dude. Oh my god, look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> what the? Oh, Good. I haven't eaten or taken a drink yet today, so. <laughs> Let's That's just sit. Problem. Let's sit in awe of the glory of this family. Callus. No, not the thing on your feet. Although Callus was about to be on the bottom of your boots, Callus started off just chilling in the room until one teammate decided it was funny to shoot my man's cup and then it was on. Callus got up, opened the doors on the right, left, and middle, and unleashed an abundance of ads to clear. After a bit, four scions and bubbles with symbols above the bubbles appeared. Callus then hit the clapper and teleported everyone to the void where we got to see the big head version of Callus and probably the true form of Callus with an asterisk because of a reason a bit later. In void room, there were three charges to grab. So three players had to jump into the three charges. If not, prepare for the big suck that Callus gave and death. If you did grab a charge, you'd be taken back to Callus and have to deal with a wave of ads and Callus laser beaming you. The players who remained in the void room needed to call out symbols located on Callus' forehead. Either axe, dog, cup, or sun were to be called since the three players that were out there, each player had a different symbol. So process of elimination meant that the players in throne room punched a scion with the remaining symbol that the players didn't call in Void Room. Once the Scion was punched, it created a barrier for those in Void Room to rest behind. The problem for those in Void was projections to shoot and those annoying and unbelievably accurate Scions with grenades that boop you into the air. Seriously, these Scions became such a problem that it slowed down day one progress a lot. 
and most LFG progress too. After you made it through five rounds of this, the final task for those in Void was to bust out that pre-order exotic Cold Heart and blast away at skulls that Callus was puking out for a buff to shoot Callus. This is pretty weird if you ask me. Callus helping you beat Callus, but I digress. Then join your teammates and tick away at Callus's health. While Void Room was shooting skulls though, Throne Room was actually shooting Callus' shield down and waiting to fully take it down for Callus to stop shooting skulls and stop applying buff. Of course, you just didn't want to die in Throne Room. Speaking of damage, on day one, this took the world's first team up to five damage phases to complete and some teams lost here just to not having enough ammo, not having survivability for five phases, some not being ready for new attacks, and some failing at final stand. Oh, now we gotta do this one more time. I'm dead, dead, dude. I'm shooting the I, I can. Rest, but I died in the process. Ah, oh, yeah, so oh, that's what I gotta do. Stand. We have a little bit. I did about, uh... Damage, yep. Come on, Ben! Did you get him? Not yet. Nice. No, oh, I have no idea how much health he had left. He oh my god. He, he exploded. He had, uh, he had about uh, half of that last bar. I was still alive and shooting, by the way. <sighs> now you'll yeah. notice something as Callus begins to get weaker. He's a robot. And a dang strong one, too. Yeah, get off, get off, get off, get off. Out the plate, out the plate, out the plate, out the plate, out the plate. Yeah, final damage, it's gonna happen. Ready for keep it. Shooting, just keep shooting, just keep shooting. Get off, get off. Yeah. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Nade, supers, anything. Shoot him. Shoot him. One, one. We got him. Let's go. Oh Let's my god. Him. Woo! Oh my god. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh man, that was too close. Oh my god. Oh my god. Nice. Oh my god, we did it. After the world's first teams beat him, Callus had some words to say. This thing you know is a lie. There is a truth beyond what your people and your speaker have told you. I can take you to that truth if you seek me out. These gifts are a reminder of my words. Emperor Callus has spoken. And if you'd been doing the Legend of Acrius quest, then you'd have progressed your quest to get one of the best shotguns in the game. But just get ready for that hell of a strike. After your completion of Callus, get ready for the big reveal. Time for the real final <laughs> boss. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Dang. I mean, that wasn't him. That was a robot. Oh my god. Is there another boss? Yeah, it was. Dude, it's, Jeez, an it's another callus, dude. That was a fake callus. Look at all of these calluses. Oh my what? gosh. I mean, he said enjoy my gift to you. Uh, Callus is a. Uh, oh my god. That's, that's pretty Please. extravagant. Wait, mask. I got the mask. What a badass. Right, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Right, okay, wait. Orbit, 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 Orbit. Let's get out of here. I, I left up. Oh my god. Oh. Yep. Callus Army. This sent reactions in many different ways from people being excited for what Callus was really doing and others being annoyed that this raid boss was a tease for a future raid boss. The first time this series had ever done that. This and all the other feedback to the game left fans pretty split. So what did you think of the ending of this raid? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so that was Leviathan on day one. And not too long after, this raid would get the prestige mode treatment almost a month later on October 10th, 2017. Prestige mode came with a lot of controversy and not a ton of changes. Enemies were harder, dogs had extra doggo on each side, gauntlet required you to do the rotating strategy, but this time swapping roles, and baths was, well, just baths. With some bather poop. Callus had the player that punched a scion teleported to Void, so organize a dedicated puncher was really the only thing you had to do here. The real nice parts of Prestige 
was the teams racing figuring out the proper pathing to reach each encounter faster. This was done through the underbelly. The underbelly is a vast majority of the size of the Leviathan. The underbelly is really, and everyone say it with me, the Dark Souls 1 connected world. Yay, see, I said it, I said it, I, 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 I said it. The underbelly is extremely cool and acts as the place to deposit those keys from encounters. The keys were to be used to open chests associated with the name of the key, and some were easy, while others made you had to go through an obstacle, and finally, some had you taking down these teabagging robots in time before the timer went off and ads spawned, so you had to start over. The keys netted some callous tokens to be given to the possessed sweeper bot, a legendary engram or two, and a chance at an exotic. You were going to get lost in here for sure, but it offered nuance and shortcuts to access those encounters without having to do the Castellum every single time. There was a variety of ways to enter the underbelly like bats having levers and pressure plates, gauntlet having more levers, dogs having pressure plates, etc. Some had some great little details too, like gauntlet's lever order being the order of the pots on the ground next to them from small to large, or the levers from waterfall needing all six players to pull at the same time. So many small touches here, and I absolutely love that you didn't have to do the Castellum every single time, as it felt very repetitive after a while. Players who were racing needed to have the underbelly mapped out in order to win the race. One last thing that Prestige also did with the underbelly was it took away the symbols that people were used to seeing to map out which way they were going to go in order to get to certain encounters. The controversy here came with Team Redeem and others using what is called the Coil Glitch. Warcliff Coil is a very unique weapon. Every rocket fired from the coil breaks into eight smaller rockets that track enemies individually and do their own damage. For this effect to work, each of the eight smaller rockets are treated as their own entity. Therefore, in the coding, one coil equals eight rockets. When you switch off coil with one rocket to another rocket, for example, the game checks your ammo counts in the coil and sees that you have eight rockets, then checks the new rocket's max ammo, which is six. The game then realizes you have more than full ammo. This works with every weapon and also explains why switching to coil always leaves you with no ammo, since one coil is treated as more ammo than any other power weapon you can ever equip. This is a bug, not a cheat or an exploit. Lots of teams competing used this because it wasn't listed as a disqualification on Bungie's rules like the add despawn glitch at Callus was. Team Redeem would win this race, but oh man, did controversy ensue and Destiny 2's launch was looking tough to say the least. I want you to know, this raid was fun, but the state and systems in Destiny 2 at the time definitely affected its favorability. Sun, 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 sun. Sun, sun. All bait instantly. No, no. no. GG. no GG. Let's go! Let's go! GG, I'm pretty sure that is it. Now, I know you've probably been waiting for this, and that is the loot discussion. So, let's have it. Best loot in the game again, baby! Midnight Coup! Outlaw Rampage for fast reload after headshots and more damage after kills. The Pulse Rifle Inaugural Address with Outlaw and Kill Clip for more damage after a reload. Sins of the Past for Cluster Bomb Rockets. Mob Justice for SMG users with Pulse Monitor for increased handling and reload when low. And Moving Target for increased stability on a moving target. Alone as a God had Triple Tap for three headshots giving you one bullet back. And Snapshot for quick aiming. Ghost Primus had high impact reserves and under pressure, which makes it more accurate the lower your ammo is. Is. Conspirator, the scout rifle, had full auto and dragonfly, which was baby firefly, and would explode heads on headshot kills, doing damage to those around the target. Finally, it stared back. A baby pencil. That was a legendary sword, which was rare, and it had a heavy attack animation, which was shared with Ray's Lighter from Destiny 1. The weapons outside of the sword all shared the perk Ambitious Assassin, which overflows the mag based on rapid kills. Also, 
the Legend of Acrius exotic shotgun, which was fantastic and even had its catalyst. Yes, catalyst in a random prestige mode chest. We'll save that discussion about Acrius for another video one day. Just know it was good. The gear looked cool and offered a different shade for prestige mode, all with the white, purple, and gold feature like the weapons. The gear could even drop with new mods like Striking Hand for a 20% damage buff after a melee kill, Giving Hand for heavy ammo after a punch, Shielding Hand, etc. Really cool mods, still relevant in 2020. Emblems and an extra chest were given for challenges too. Challenges were pretty straightforward here though, and didn't really offer anything like a Destiny 1 challenge would. Like Gauntlet requiring everyone to just do each job. Bats needing someone on the middle plate at all times. Dogs, I mean just one phase the dogs. And Callus requiring all four plates to be stood on for damage at the same time. So I guess that's really everything Leviathan had to offer in terms of what Bungie set out. But the player base found a lot more nuance in challenges and especially speedruns. Different videos, but trust me, some of the coolest speedruns you will ever see in a video game, period. I mean, just watch this. Now I feel like it's time I talk my big game on this raid with my chest out. My chest is literally out, so talking a big game. I love Callus. I love the underbelly as a concept, but I can't say I love the gauntlet after the first time through, or bats in general. It feels like to me Bungie was afraid to expand on ideas and execution in some areas. You know I hate just doing plates, especially if it's waiting and killing ads but I also hate when the game feels like I'm not in control of my actions at all. I guess Callus is in control and we are a part of his game show, but I still hate not having freedom. Like I said, I love Callus. The boss fight was wonderful for the time and showed what Destiny 1 could not do, and that was set new boundaries with sheer scale of encounters and Void Room being a spectacle especially. This raid had a lot of love put into it, but was bogged down by systems in year one that prevented it from reaching its full potential. I think this raid could have benefited from another boss room encounter outside of Callus, and maybe even encounter in the underbelly to spice it up. I want you to close your eyes and imagine an optional raid boss in the underbelly, one that could drop a weapon with really low odds of getting it, but was unique to that boss. Also, it could drop an emblem, shader, gear, whatever. This would add to the exploration of the underbelly tenfold. I still wonder how this raid would have played out given the current sandbox and systems of Destiny 2 and with a little bit more time being able to put into it instead of Activision squeezing that time. The lore is tremendous here and tells the story of how Gaul came to power, betrayed Callus, and how Callus is kind of like Julius Caesar betrayed by Gaul's Brutus-style army. I think environmental storytelling is great with the architecture, telling us how big of a deal Callus is, but more importantly, it invests the player into the story of what the hell is going on here. Currently, because Destiny 2 was changed in so many ways to improve the game, this raid is an absolute joke in terms of difficulty, with Callus being killed by every single exotic in the game by Sweatsicle. The look of Callus and the design of the raid will leave a lot more excitement when it eventually returns with the Destiny Content Vault. Yes, this raid, much like a lot of the upcoming raids in the Destiny 2 raid series, will be going away on November 10th to make more room for future content. And to be honest, I'm okay with that. But man, I'm gonna miss Callus. Anyways, that is your Leviathan raid. This one, to me, is more like a glass of wine. Age it, and it gets better with time. Until next time, if you guys did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated, as well as a subscription. Tell me your favorite Destiny 2 raid, talk to me about the game, 
other games, anything, seriously anything, on my Twitch. Link to my Twitch in the description. If you want to support me, I recommend coming by all the socials and maybe picking up some merch on the way out and using code Evan for some amazing G-subs. They don't pay me to say that, I just love the product. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Hmm. Means to an end's not worth doing this week. I mean, I'll still do it, but it was said that you don't get nothing. Unless you need the purple. One of the more pieces. It's not dead? Come on. No, dude, come on. Come on, bro. Oh, I got an I got a funny ass idea here. He's gonna be mad. Oh no! <laughs> no, dude! Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh man. Oh, let's not talk about that one right there. Shots, <laughs> I, I.